Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the 18th chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sang the choir's anthem last Sunday as a hymn. Do you remember that? And I mentioned then that there had been a poll taken of United Methodists in the last few years. Number one favorite hymn was what? Amazing. Amazing Grace. Always will be. Number two, Here I Am, Lord. We read it, we sang it last week when we read the story of Isaiah's call. Because Isaiah is called and he says, Here I am, Lord, send me. But really, that hymn was written in response to the lesson that Alexa read from Samuel, the call of Samuel, because it's, I've heard you calling in the night. There are other hymns about that. Master, speak, thy servant heareth, which is an older hymn. How many of you grew up singing that one? Well, I must be older than everybody to hear this morning. But there's another one. It's an old one. Maybe if you know it, sing with me. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lordy, what shall I do? What shall I do? Some of you know that. Some of you, I see your mouths moving. You're not really singing out. <laughs> but the story of Samuel is an incredible story because he was called when he was just a child. Do you know the backstory on Samuel? Here's your Bible quiz for the day, and we're starting Sunday school, so I want you to go in your Wayback Machine if you haven't heard it in all these years. What was Samuel's mother's name? Hannah. I heard it up here. Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, who was barren. Hannah could not have a child, which was seen as a curse by God. Her neighbors would have talked about her, looked down upon her, and thought she was someone that God's blessing had passed over. And so she went to the temple to pray, and she prayed fervently, and she prayed so long and so hard, and her body was racked with her grief, so that the priest thought that she was what? Oh, you got to open that Bible. Maybe we should not give them to the third graders. Maybe we should give them to the 50 and 60-year-olds here. He thought she was drunk and wanted to put her out of the temple, but God heard her prayers for a child, and she had promised if she were blessed with a child, she would devote this son to God. And so, as soon as he's weaned, when he's just a toddler, she takes him to the priest, Eli, and he serves in the temple. That's devotion to God, isn't it? To pray for a baby, and then to be able to turn your child over to God. And so he serves in the temple, and what a great place to sleep in the same room with the Ark of the Covenant. That's where the Ten Commandments were. So the boy is sleeping next to the Word of God, spoken by God, written by God's own hand, carried by the people through the wilderness. Now they have a temple, and the, the Ark has a home. And so Samuel is sleeping as a child in the temple, and he hears, Samuel, Samuel. And he thinks it's Eli calling him. Why did he think it was Eli? Do you remember? The word of God was what? Rare. The word of God was rare. No one was seeing visions. God was not speaking. And why would God stop speaking? Because people had just stopped listening. But then God sees in this child something. And God says, Samuel, Samuel. And he runs to Eli and he says, I'm here. You called me. And Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. And he calls again. And he runs to Eli. Didn't you hear that? Didn't you call me? And Eli then realizes God is calling. And then he says, go and go back to sleep. And the next time you hear the voice, it's God who's speaking to you. And I want you to say, here I am. Here's your servant. I'm listening. Speak to me. 
and he does. Now we cut off the story there because the rest of the story is a hard one. Because when you're called to be a prophet, when you're called to speak to God, it's never to say happy days are here again. And he is given a message to take to Eli to tell him that, uh-oh, you're in trouble, buddy. You and your sons. His sons were not doing their duty as priests. Now, you know they, they did the sacrifices, right? The priests would sacrifice the animals that were brought. That meat was used to feed the priests. They didn't just burn it all up to, into smoke. But what his sons were doing was like a barbecue. They were going in while no one was looking. They would take their fork and they would stick it in and they would pull out the best part of the meat for themselves. God does not like that. And so a harsh word is spoken against them by Samuel. And Eli, who understands that it is God that is speaking through this boy, knows that trouble is ahead. Well, what else do you know about Samuel? He doesn't stay a kid. He grows up like the rest of us. He grows up and he is given an incredibly important task in God's behalf. Do you remember what that is? He anoints the first king of Israel. Who is? Here's your other Bible quiz today. Saul. Saul is the first king of Israel. And then when Saul does what is evil in God's sight, God says, uh-uh, I'm going to raise up a new king. And Samuel, who was once a boy himself, anoints another boy who will become the king of Israel. And that boy is, you better get this one right. Amen. Amen. Woo! 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 I was scared there for a minute. So why today, when we're talking about call, do I want to talk about a kid? What do you think? It's Sunday school day. It is the day when we get everybody geared up for school. We're a little bit late starting this year, but that's okay, because I think some of you have been busy. And we bless these backpacks. And I'm telling you what, when you raised your hand and you did a blessing, a blessing is a thing. It is not just a wish. It's not a whim. It's not going through the air. A blessing is an incredibly powerful thing, because you are taking God's love and God's grace, and you're pouring it in to these children and to these teachers and to these school workers and into the things that they're going to be taking with them to school. Because God calls children. God calls children. God uses children. One thing that I just can't take is when people say children are the future of the church. Have you heard that one? What's wrong with that? Children are part of the body of Christ right now. But they are the future leaders of the church. They will be the ones who will speak prophetic words to others. They're the ones who will be bringing the message as pastors and as lay people. They're the ones who are going to be trustees one day. Do I get an amen from Wayne Sutter on that? One day. One day. These younger ones are going to be taking on the reins of responsibility. But only if we listen to Jesus. Remember, God spoke to Samuel, and it was like, did you hear that? What did I just say about Jesus? They want to know who's the greatest in the kingdom, because they all think, it's probably me. And Jesus takes a child, and we cannot begin to know how little value children had in that culture at that time, partly because a lot of them died before they reached adulthood, and in a very hard life, you sort of get used to that and you let it go, but partly because they just were not valued. And Jesus takes something that the rest of the world says is not important, draws this child to himself, and says to them, unless you can accept the kingdom with the humility and the innocence and the hunger of this one, you're missing the moat. And then he says, whoever welcomes one of these, welcomes who? Welcomes me. Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name, welcomes me. Did you hear that, church? Did you hear that? Sounds like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name. Sounds like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name. Sounds like Jesus. Somebody's calling my name. 
Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? God is speaking. We may feel like Eli that the word of God is so rare in our culture today that we're not hearing God, but God is speaking. But if we're not being Eli to our little ones, if we're not saying to them, you have to listen for God's voice, if we've forgotten how to listen for God's voice, if we've forgotten how to be humble like children, we're going to miss God's voice. And let me tell you what, if God his voice doesn't get through to them, the other voices of the world are going to get through to them. Because what's calling to children these days? Not a rhetorical question. What is calling out to children these days? TV. TV. <laughs> Their cell phones. I almost hit a grown person walking across the street, just walked right out into the street like this. What else is calling out to our children? Hmm? Drugs. Drugs. Alcohol. Living in excess. Owning more stuff like that's going to be the answer to all our prayers. Stuff is going to fix our problems, right? If you only had this or that or the other. There are a lot of things calling out to kids these days, but so is God in Jesus Christ. But we have to come together as a congregation, not just Epworth. We have to come together as the people of God in Jesus Christ to provide a place for children to learn and grow and experience and most of all to hear the word of God. Which means sometimes we're going to have to say, hush, so you can listen. Sometimes we have to say that to our own hearts. Sometimes we have to turn off our own cell phones. You know there is a power button on your cell phone. Did you know that? You can turn it off. You really can. You can even put it down or leave it at home. And life will go on. But we have to listen. We have to help the children to listen. That's why I'm going to hitch up again. I'm going to, I've said there's no such thing as a volunteer in the church of Jesus Christ. There are disciples. We need disciples to help us with children's church. We need disciples to help us with Sunday school and youth ministry because they're not just the future. They are the body of Christ here and now. And without us, where will they be? Without them, where will we be? Because without them, we'll start to take ourselves very seriously, won't we? How many of you, when you got your first baby, realized television wasn't nearly as fun as watching the kid? Right? Or how many of you, it's not your first baby, it's your first grandchild. I tell you what, I've gone to churches throughout my career, and I've said, are there any joys today? And people say, they're like, oh, joy, 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 joy. But if there is a woman and she's standing on the pew with an air horn going, I have a grandchild. I want you to look. How many of you are grandparents or great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents? How many of you remember that excitement when that first one came out and you didn't have to take care of it and send it to college? <laughs> you just got to spoil it and love on it and feed it full of sugar and send it home to mom and dad. Do you remember that joy, that wonder? That's how we need to greet every single child who walks into this place. I say let's greet the old people that way too, with the same exuberance that we have for our own, because they are our children, because we are the body of Christ in this congregation. And they are our future leaders, but they are the body of Jesus Christ today. So become a little childlike, not childish, a little childlike in your own faith. And remember that whoever we welcome in his name, we're welcoming him as well. Thanks be to God. Amen.